Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will dissect and discuss the Warrior's Iceberg. For those who don't know what an iceberg is, it's a popular format used to go in depth for some facts, some theories, some drama, and some fun. At the top of the iceberg are some more popular and well-known theories or facts, but as we go deeper, the lesser known most of the information is. For this video, I'll be focusing on the first three tiers. As always, this video will contain spoilers, so please watch with caution. With all that aside, let's dive in. First up on the tip of the iceberg is the debate on the color of Scourge's collar. This is a widely debated topic within the Warriors community, as the books have had different mentions of the color of Scourge's collar. Throughout different books and official art, Scourge has been shown with a purple collar in the Scourge manga, a yellow collar in official artwork, and a red collar in the merchandise. The topic is still highly debated as of even in 2021, with Leopard Star's honor, there's a mention of Scourge's collar being purple, while later the same year, with the release of the Scourge minifigure on the Warriors website, he's been shown with a red collar. Similar to the last part, Dubwing's eyes have been a hotly debated topic within the community, mostly gaining traction after a video uploaded by Moonkitty criticized the Warriors Wikia and their choice of information. Dubwing's eye color has been inconsistent between the book's contents and cover art, with many instances of Dubwing listed to have blue, green, or even amber eyes. While official artwork of Dubwing has her with green eyes, the authors have often flip-flopped on the colors. This inconsistency in the books got ugly and caused a lot of fighting within the community, but has since died off in recent years. This next entry almost explains itself. Aaron Hunter is just a pseudonym used by a group of authors. Currently, Kate Carey, Cherith Baldry, and Sui T. Sutherland make up the warrior side of Aaron Hunter. Maps, short for multi-animator projects, are animations to songs or other media produced by multiple animators. Over the years, these projects have gained lots of popularity and showed off the talents of many artists within the community. Many times, larger projects surpass millions of views and reach a broader audience than the warrior side of YouTube. The other two entries are grouped in with this on the iceberg are two older animations to songs, Bone Shatter and Mr. Brightside, which were extremely popular at the time. While on the topic of animations, SSS Warrior Cats was an animation project that took it upon themselves to animate the Warriors books, starting with Into the Wild. This project had a huge impact on the art and animation side within the Warriors fandom. However, the channel has since faded into obscurity and hasn't been uploaded on since 2017. If you're a new Warriors fan and haven't watched it yet, or even an older fan and haven't heard of it for some reason, I highly suggest you take a look at their channel as it's an important part of Warriors history and the episodes still hold up for their time. Tall Jake is a ship name used for Tallstar and Jake, two characters who appear in Tallstar's Revenge. This pairing came to be in this book when Tallstar leaves his clan and meets a kitty pet named Jake. The two develop a strong relationship, which left many fans believing the two to be mates. The Aaron Hunter team refuses to officially name them as a couple, however, for unknown reasons. Many fans speculate that it's due to censorship in many countries. Despite the fact it's not listed canonically, author Kate Carey has stated herself that the two are mates, but inside the publisher's heads, they're just good friends. Wayne McLaughlin is the former cover artist for the Warriors series and drew all the original artwork for the covers of the books until his death in 2015. He left behind a beautiful legacy, though in recent years his artwork has led to some controversy, which will be touched upon later in the video. Regardless, his artwork is still widely cherished by the community. Before the reveal of the imposter's identity in Veil of Shadows, there are many theories on who exactly the imposter might be. Theories range from Soul to Scourge to even One-Eye. A lot of the guesses were a bit wild and outlandish as people were scrambling to find hidden meanings behind the scenes and find out the imposter's true identity for their big reveal. Funnily enough, before the official reveal of the imposter's identity in the books, the Warriors website made a blog post showcasing the new cover for the book which had the imposter on the front cover. Although at that point it was pretty obvious who it was going to be. As I mentioned earlier in the video, one pillar of the Warriors community is the animation side. 
Many large animations use songs of bands, and these maps have given bands lots more attention. Some bands have even been introduced to the Warriors fandom due to the animation's popularity. Secrets of the Clans is a field guide released in 2007 with a lot of information about the formation of the clans, stories in different POVs, and other interesting stories from the Warriors universe. At the time, the guide had a lot of new, interesting information, but as time went on and the writers decided to expand the Warriors universe, a lot of the information within the book became obsolete or retconned. Namely, after the Dawn of the Clans arc basically retconned everything that happened in the book. While some of the short stories are still interesting, the book is almost completely useless. In 2016, Alibaba Pictures, a movie producing company, bought the rights to make a Warrior Cats movie. Vicky Holmes released a video announcing the creation of the movie and stated that the movie was still in its early stages, so not much information has been released. In fact, the official Warriors movie Twitter has been inactive since 2016. There has been little to no information about the movie since, and honestly, it doesn't seem like there's going to be one anytime soon. When movie companies buy the rights to a movie, it doesn't always mean that they're going to create one as the rights to a Warrior Cats movie has been bought by other companies before, but nothing came of it. So far, the only news we've seen about the movie has been a video uploaded by Vicky, a few bits of concept art, a teaser in a foreign book, and the names of producers and writers who are working on the film. A lot of people also source the IMDb page for the movie as evidence that it's going to come out soon, but obviously it's a joke. At the bottom of the page, it even says it, and it has actors like Adam Sandler and Logan Paul in it. So it's obviously not real, but I, it was funny seeing a lot of people on Twitter, especially make fun of it and, you know, take it as canon. This next entry was a theory, but it was actually proven by the authors. In the Power of Three arc, we're met with a prophecy. There will be three, kin of your kin, who hold the power of the stars in their paws. The prophecy is about Lionblaze, Jayfeather, and Dovewing, but originally Hollyleaf was chosen as the third cat. Powers like mind reading and the ability to see the future were considered, but Vicky Holmes decided that none of the powers fit her character, so Devlin was chosen as her replacement. Both Bramble Star and Sorrel Tail are based off and named after Sheriff Baldry's real cats, Bramble and Sorrel. At the time of the recording of this video, Sorrel has unfortunately passed, but Bramble is still alive and well. This is a popular theory among the fan base where Rowan Claw, the former Shadow Clan leader, is transgender. As every appearance of Rowan Claw up until Starlight, he's been listed as a she cat. This was originally thought to be a mistake on the editor's part, as he has since been referred to as a Tom. However, when Rowan Claw was chosen as the Warriors of the Week on the official Warriors website, most images had Rowan Claw with the trans flag. While it could be a coincidence, it's most likely intentional and strengthens the theory. Even in recent books, like Grace Tripe's Vow, which was set in the past, have Rowan Claw listed as a she-cat instead of a tom. Starkit's Prophecy is a fan fiction popularized by Moon Kitty's animated adaptation that features Starkit, a Mary Sue character, in their endeavors. The fan fiction is essentially the warrior's version of My Immortal, with Starkit being an obvious self-insert of the author and the shenanigans that revolve around her. The plot, as well as the grammar and spelling, are all over the place and honestly make no sense. The outlandish nature of the fanfiction helped popularize it, and it could be seen as a satirical piece to poke fun at the large amounts of fanfiction within the fandom. This entry of the iceberg is a meme within the fandom as Heavy Step, a RiverClan warrior, has died multiple times throughout the books yet keeps appearing back in them. Heavy Step dies for a first time in Sunset due to green cough, yet appears in the allegiances in the following book, The Sight. He's been seen as alive until Long Shadows, where he dies once more to Green Cough, yet is still listed in the allegiances in the following book. Finally, Heavy Step is put to rest during the Omen of the Stars arc, where he's no longer listed in the allegiances. Heavy Step's reappearance in the books has become a bit of a joke within the community, saying that Star Clan has granted him multiple lives. Vicky Holmes, a former writer for Warriors, is even in on the joke and has stated she secretly wants to write a super edition in which Heavy Step has gained multiple lives from Star Clan to go on a secret mission. The Warriors Adventure Game is a pen and paper RPG sort of inspired by Dungeons and Dragons that was included at the end of some of the Omen of the Stars books as a bonus for purchasing. There were also some scenarios included on the old Warriors website in the Ultimate Guide as well. 
The main idea behind the adventure game was you, along with a group of friends and a narrator, would create characters who would go on to solve missions in the clans and work together to achieve a goal. Most of it is up to what the group decides to do and is based off imagination, so the game would have infinite replay value. The pitfall of this game, however, was how confusing it was, especially to younger fans. Plus, let's be real, how many Warriors fans do you know in real life? Probably not enough to fill a game, right? I remember trying this game out for myself with a friend of mine, but we sort of lost interest after making our character, and I imagine many other kids were the same way, so it was discontinued. Before the new site revamp, the old Warriors website had a section for games and extras. This tab had printables, videos, quizzes, and games. The games tab had the Warriors Adventure game, which I discussed earlier, but also another interactive game. This game was called the New Prophecy Quest. And with a title like that, you can expect some riveting gameplay. <laughs> the New Prophecy Quest was a flash game that involved you making a cat and traversing through a map in order to reach the moon pole. Or something like that. Honestly, I don't see too much information about this game, and since it was made with Flash, it's currently not playable. However, I do remember playing through it a lot when I was younger, and uh, getting extremely frustrated at the difficulty. If you do somehow manage to make it through the game, you're granted with the satisfaction of reaching the moon pool and earning your warrior name. The Aaron Hunter tours were a series of tours that the authors under the Aaron Hunter name would take around certain parts of the United States and a few other countries. The tours mostly consisted with Vicki Holmes as the main figurehead, and she would talk with fans, sign books, and reveal some Warriors trivia. There's not much else to say about the tours, as they are essentially just a large meet and greet for Vicki Holmes. Tail Chaser's Song is a novel written by Tad Williams in 1985 that focuses on the adventures of a cat and his quest to find a friend who mysteriously goes missing. What does this have to do with Warriors? Well, they're both about cats. For real though, many fans theorize that this book is the inspiration for Warriors, or even darker, that Warriors blatantly stole the entire premise of this book. While there are striking similarities between the two books, a lot of it could just be chalked up to incidents. The main arguments are that many characters, plot points, and perhaps even the naming system have all been stolen from Tail Chaser's song. But really, there's not too much evidence backing these claims. A lot of people have compiled very long, detailed lists explaining how Warriors copied off of Tail Chaser's song, but to keep this video shorter, I'm not going to go in depth. I actually did pick up this book and read it myself, but I honestly didn't find too many similarities between the two. There were some parts that seemed like they were inspired, but for the most part it was it could just really be coincidence. Midnight, a badger from the new Prophecy arc, is quite the anomaly. She's a peaceful badger who can communicate with Starkland, foxes, cats, and other living creatures. Not much was said about the badger, and for the most part, the authors kept all information about her very vague. That was, up until the release of the ebook version of The Last Hope, in which the authors revealed that Midnight is in fact a ghost. On Kate's blog, a fan commented about Turtletail's death in the first battle, saying that they could imagine Turtletail was killed by an old-timey car to fit in with the timeline of the series. Kate Carey thought this was amusing and commented on how Turtletail was flattened by a Ford Model T. Though not an official statement, it's considered canon by many fans and continues to be a joke in the fandom. The original forest territories, shown in the first and second arc, are actually based on a real place called New Forest. This is a forest in the country of Hampshire in southern England. The lake, however, is completely fictional. Earlier in the video, I mentioned some controversy around Wayne McLaughlin, the original cover artist's art. Wayne McLaughlin has been accused of tracing over pictures of cats for official art. There is some argument if the pieces are heavily referenced or traced, but looking at some of the art, it's hard to tell either way. Most of these allegations happened after his passing, so we'll never get an official answer as to if they are traced or not. For this theory, I couldn't find any specific author statements or anything from the authors, but I do recall reading about this before. Essentially, in the Omen of the Stars arc, Jayfeather receives a prophecy saying that there is an additional fourth cat. I believe that this theory is that the fourth cat was supposed to be Ivy Pool, Holly Leaf, or a different kin of Firestar, however, it ended up being Firestar himself. Firestar being the fourth cat is still a controversial topic within the community, but I personally think it was a nice addition and gave him the final send-off he needed and gave way to a new era in the Warriors series.
Graystripe's parents have been controversial within the fandom, as Graystripe's parents were originally posted on the Old Warriors website as Patchpelt and Willpelt, who are, well, siblings. Obviously, this is a big no-no, and has since been taken back by the authors. In a statement by Vicki Holmes, she talks about how when she had written the Warriors series, she hadn't thought about a family tree and created characters without thinking about who their parents would be, as she thought the series wouldn't take off as it did. Graystripe's vow has since confirmed Willapelt as Graystripe's mother, but no father has been officially listed as of this video. Alright, so this theory is another one I'm not 100% sure of, but I do believe it's about the Silent Thaw and how Bramblestar was acting strangely and was carrying an unfamiliar illness. Many fans theorized that Bramblestar had in fact contacted Rabies and that this series would be about the clan's battle against the sickness. This was proven false, however, as instead this arc focuses on the possession of Bramblestar. Bright Spirit, a cat who appears in a one-off in Long Shadows along with Shining Heart and Braveheart are all cats based off of real people. Bright Spirit was created as a way to honor Emmy Cherry, a Warriors fan who tragically passed away after a tornado hit her home in Atkins, Arkansas in 2008. When Vicki Holmes heard the news of the young fan's passing, she decided to honor her by creating a character to forever memorialize her and her parents within the Warriors series. Cherith Baldry also wrote a short play featuring the three cats and was performed by a local high school as a fundraiser and was published on the Warriors website for everyone to read. Honestly, this was a really sweet thing for the authors to do and was a really nice way to pay tribute to such a young fan. On a lighter note, another cat who is named after a real person is Ivy Pool. Ivy Pool is in fact named after the daughter of one of Vicky's friends, who's also named Ivy Pool. This was a hashtag that was started by the Warriors Loves You community, in which a lot of accounts made jokes about Redtail canceling the character. Art, memes, and other media were created poking fun at the character, and quickly the trend started gaining popularity. The hashtag ended up trending on Twitter, which was a first for anything Warriors related. This entry also involves the Warriors Twitter, as many fans had found one of the errands to be quite problematic. This one entry could honestly fill a whole video alone, so I'll try my best to summarize this as much as possible. But in June of 2020, Gillian Phillip, a writer under the Aaron Hunter name, was found to be posting some radical tweets online. Phillip had, on her professional account, been posting about her support for JK Rowling. Philip continued her hate campaign on her site account in which she would post many untrue and hateful comments about trans women. Philip refused to acknowledge her wrongdoings and started to harass fans when they questioned her beliefs. She started retweeting as many of the tweets aimed at her as possible in order for her followers to attack the original poster. She not only sent hundreds of people to attack Warriors fans, but many of the people receiving the hate were in fact minors. The word soon quickly spread throughout the Twitter community about Philip's actions and the community joined together to stop her. Emails were sent to HarperCollins and working partners, both owners of the Aaron Hunter name, demanding something be done. Soon enough, working partners responded and promptly fired Philip and removed her from the Aaron Hunter name. It's exactly what you think it is. This is a controversial topic at the time when a Warriors animator uploaded a map part which showed off, well, and while many people made jokes about the drawing, some people took offense to seeing this new side of Firestar and started to attack the artist. Eventually the flames died down and the balls became drama of the past, but it's crazy to think how two lines caused so much drama within a community. Now this is a more silly entry in the iceberg, and is based on speculation, as there have been some debate if the plush poles are actually as transparent as they seem. Many fans believe that the choices for the plushies have been predetermined or that the polls have been rigged in favor of a few of the candidates. There has been no concrete evidence for either of these accusations, but regardless, the plushies still look very cute, and I'm sure that eventually, there will be plushies of almost every character. Alright guys, that's going to be it for part one. I hope you learned some new things about warriors in the community within this video. This video only covered the first few tiers of the iceberg and barely scratched the surface. I'll be uploading part two, which will hold some darker entries and go more in depth in the community and lore, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. If I got anything wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll make corrections as needed. As always, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.